target set is the title. So this is a 35 year old gentleman, Mr. A, who's a real estate broker from West Bengal. He present with high grade intermittent fever for 10 days. It was associated with chills and rigors, relieved with medication that's patched small. He also had associated myalgia, two episodes of non-bilious, non-blood stain, non-projectile vomiting and non-specific headache. He had no bleeding manifestations, no other localizing features. Five days into the illness, he developed a skin rash, which started as a small blister on his back. It was associated with mild itching and no pain. Initially, it was tense, but slowly reduced spontaneously without rupture or ooze. Then changed to erythematous lesions, which then spread all over the trunk and abdomen. Uh, he also developed, around seven days into the illness, oral lesions, which were painful, with crusting on the lips, and there was a single lesion on the gland penis. So he was actually evaluated elsewhere um, between the onset of fever and the skin rash. At that time, he was given tab uh, keftriaxone 200 mg BD, tab parasmol, and tab pantoprazole. About one day after taking these tablets, he developed the lesions. So in past history, uh, he actually three years ago presented to another center with some dyspeptic symptoms. That time they diagnosed uh, fatty liver and he was actually on his way to Velour for evaluation of the same when all these, he was actually in Velour planning to get evaluated when all these symptoms develop. No other known comorbidities, no history of any alternative medicine intake. Personal history is a chronic ethanol consumer, chronic smoker, and uh, no significant family history of malignancy or any other conditions. So on examination, his heart rate was 100 per minute. BP was on the lower side, 98 by 60. He was tachycardic. Uh, respiratory rate was 20. He was afebrile at the time of examination, but later developed fever. Oral cavity had some crusting on the lips. Superficial ulcers in the oral cavity, left buccal mucosa, had a petechial lesion. On the chest, abdomen and limbs, multiple erythematous macular lesions and few tense bullae on an erythematous base. One lesion was also present, macular lesion on the right palm and right sole of the foot. There was no paleoectrocinosis clubbing, um, no eschar. His uh, systemic examination was unremarkable. These were actually the skin lesions. If you actually notice, there are a few bullae there uh, on an erythematous base, and these were the lesions over the abdomen. Um, anybody want to take a guess on what it would be? There was no clear dermatomal pattern or anything of involvement. It just fully view bullous lesions with an arithmetic base. Okay. Uh, moving on. So his syndrome was an acute undifferentiated febrile illness with a rash. Only thing atypical was that there were bullae and the rash was involving the palms and soles. So the differential diagnosis initially considered were a rickettsial infection because of the palms and soles. At the very beginning, uh, before the bullet became so confluent, it was mostly macular rash. Then the bullet developed with viral exanthematous fevers. HSV was also considered in view of the bullous lesions over there. Then drug-related, he had taken keflosporins. Um, autoimmune cutaneous vasculitis were all considered much lower down. Malignancy was considered the least likely. So these were the original uh, differentials that we considered. Anybody now wants to take a look? This was a typical lesion that developed after some time. Anyone now wants to say what it was? So, come to it. Borrelius. Okay, we'll come to it. So, um, uh, the reason that we wanted to highlight this case is that fever with rash is a very, very common thing that we see. But it's important because the rash is often the best clue that we have as to what it could be. So, that's the whole point of this, uh, highlighting this case. So, uh, hemoglobin, there was a mild anemia for a male, 11.8, not very significant, uh, normocytic. Platelet counts were again mildly, the mild thrombocytopenia was there, 1 lakh 12,000. And mild transaminase salivation was detected. Apart from that, all other baseline investigation was normal. The chest x ray was normal, ECG was normal. USC showed that grade 1 fatty liver that he originally came for evaluation for. A borderline splenomegaly, which is not clinically felt, and a mild prostatomegaly. So, uh, we went ahead and did the investigations and uh, because it was an acute undifferentiated febrile illness with involvement of palms and soles in the initial, we had sent a rickettsial test also and scrub. The scrub came positive. All the others were negative. And uh, because of the bullet, we had also taken a zinc smear. The zinc smear came negative. Uh, in view of the possible viral etiology, we sent a viral multiplex PCR, which was also negative. So, um, basically, we then did a, a skin biopsy from the bullet, and that showed. Uh, so, just to highlight what this picture actually shows, if you look very carefully, there's a bulla surrounded by a 
region of pallor around it surrounded by an erythematous lesion. This is actually a typical target lesion. It's erythema multiform that the patient has. And the uh, erythema is of, of course referring to the erythematous lesion. The multiform refers to the fact that there are multiple lesions at different, different stages at the same time. So that's how the name came erythema multiform. So what this patient actually had was erythema multiform. And uh, the uh, biopsy actually went ahead to prove it. There was interface dermatitis. We'll look at the significance of that with uh, necrotic keratinocytes scattered throughout the epidermis. And uh, there was um, also, so they said subepidermal bullous lesion, most likely erythema multiform with this biopsy. So even before this, we had clinically suspected erythema multiform. We got a dermatology consult. And so uh, we had started the patient on doxycycline as well as acyclovir. Doxy because the initial lesion was fitting in with a, a rickettsial infection. And acyclovir because of the strong association of erythema multiform with this thing. So what I wanted to highlight from this table was that herpes simplex virus by far is the commonest cause of erythema multiform. Even if negative, we should still think of uh, herpes simplex as one of the causes. Of course, our blood um, uh, viral multiplex came negative in this patient. Uh, there are other ways of looking at it which are not available in our labs. We can actually look at the lesion itself and search there also for herpes DNA and everything, which we don't commonly do. We didn't do it for this patient. So the point is infections viral account for more than 90% of cases with herpes simplex. And uh, drug-induced erythema multiform is less than 10% uh, of overall cases. Now, rickettsial induced erythema multiform is very, very, very rare. But uh, one thing to see is what people say is a possible pathogen. If you look at this list, almost every single organism in this list is intracellular. And we look at the pathogens of erythema multiform. It's usually triggered by intracellular organisms. The exact pathogenic mechanisms have not been elucidated for anything except herpes simplex. But considering that rickettsial is an intracellular organism, it is possible, and there are one or two case reports very, very rarely reported of rickettsial infections with erythema multiform as a presenting company. So it's an acute immune-mediated condition characterized by the distinctive target lesions, the typical targetoid lesions that we saw. Uh, it's often accompanied by erosions of bullae involving the orogenital or, or ocular mucosae. Now, the major erythema multiform major refers to severe mucosal involvement, that is more than two or three lesions, and uh, or systemic involvement, that is fevers and arthralgias. Otherwise, we call it erythema multiform minor. Now, coming to the actual pathogenesis, what is postulated, this is only for HSV, we don't know for the other, this thing, is that uh, actually the circulating HSV DNA from either a recent or a remote HSV infection is engulfed by the, uh, the monocyte macrophage in it within the blood vessel. And then as it migrates out to specialize within the epithelium or the keratinocytes, it actually releases this DNA, which is expressed by the keratinocyte. That triggers the TH1 lineage of the CD4 lymphocytes to react against it. And uh, that is why we get the next set of uh, the cascade happens. So once a CD4 cell is then sensitized to this HSV DNA expressed by the keratinocyte, it releases uh, interferon uh, gamma, which in turn act promotes natural killer cell activity, activates macrophages and causes this subepidermal uh, bullous lesion to develop. So if you actually see this histopathology, it is exactly at the dermoepidermal junction that this bullet develops. And the significance of this we'll see in the Nikolsky sign that is coming up. There's a severe dermal inflammatory infiltrate and the overlying epidermis uh, demonstrates liquefactive necrosis and uh, necrotic keratinocytes. So the reason why this is important is the an important differential for this with fever and some drug intake and everything is uh, Stephen Johnson bar 10 overlap, both of which have almost similar presentation, just that the lesions may be atypical. So one important thing is between erythema, uh, erythema multiform major and minor is both have prodromal signs are very rare uh, in both of them. And the skin will be a symmetric lesion with a raised bullous lesion. That is the characteristic of erythema multiform. Whereas if you go to SGSR 10, it's mostly an atypical flat macular lesion that is found in SGSR 10. The second thing is the mucosal lesions in SGSR 10 are far more in, in, uh, um, far more large, as in there's much more in, uh, intensive mucosal involvement in Stephen Johnson syndrome and 10 overlap compared to erythema multiform. With significant prodromal fever, pharyngitis, headache, which doesn't have an obvious other cause. In this patient, we had a scrub, which was a possible other cause. In SCS 10, it's not so evident what the other causes usually, other than a drug intake. 
So coming to this Nikolsky sign, the explanation. The, so what Nikolsky sign is applying lateral pressure to a bull uh, to bullous lesion will actually cause the skin to just peel off. This happens in intra epidermal lesions. So between the spinous and granulosum layer, if the fluid collects, then the bulla itself is a very thin wall blister because it's within the epidermis the fluid is collected. So you just give lateral pressure, it just peels off. Versus something like an erythema multiform, which is a epidermal, that is sub-epidermal. Between the dermis and epidermis, if the fluid collects, the bulla wall is a little bit more thick. It won't easily peel off. Okay, so that is the main uh, important differentiating factor between these two. This is a pathognomic sign of intra-epidermal keratinolysis versus, versus erythema multiform, which does not have this, which is a sub-epidermal keratinolysis. So uh, back to our patient, we treated him with doxy and acyclovir. Uh, for the topical lesion, so erythema multiform is usually a self-resolving condition. So we just gave topical steroids in consultation with dermatology. He had complete recovery within 10 days and he went home well. So the take-home points, although extremely rare, rickettsial infections can cause erythema multiform. The common factor being that they are also intracellular pathogens. That's the only thing which is known, no further this thing. We looked at the etiology and pathogens of erythema multiform. HSV and the interface dermatitis, that is between the dermoepidermal junction. Uh, important to note that HSV is almost 90% associated. We should look for it and consider it even if we don't get it anywhere. We looked at the differences between erythema major and erythema multiform minor, differentiating it from SVS10, the prodrome and the Nikolsky sign, and the pathological basis of Nikolsky sign. Thank you, Vinny. Any uh, questions? The scrub was positive and scrub can positive. So the initial manifestation, I mean, it looks so much like just varicella. Yes. So what what would uh, have you know what features would have suggested that this is not varicella? When we first saw the patient, he's febrile. He develops these typical lesions. So at the time of presentation, actually, the bullae were very few. It was more a macular lesion which involved the palms and soles. That's why we went along the spotted fever line, rickets cell infection line. We well, were there were no vesicles at the time. Very, well. very few. Then it just, most of the lesions turned into the vesicles and then the targeted lesions came. That's when we contacted Derm and involved them also, thinking, is this something else? And within one day of calling Derm, we actually got the scrub positive also. He responded to doxycycline, became afebrile soon. But the lesions started to continue to uh, manifest. And then uh, this was involved. Okay, so we have typical, I mean, lesions like this. The target appearance was very uh, clear, is it? Because on the, it, on the yes, I think on, on the, the picture it's not so it clear. Is, That's right. But when you one. when you are seeing it clinically, yes, it sir. was this one actually is close to it. Uh, there's a blister at the center. There's a pale area around it, and then an erythema around it. It's a little bit more clearer, I think, in the pictures that we have. And there were there were lesions at multiple uh, stages through and through. No dermatomal distribution, nothing else typical. He didn't have any immunocompromise also, which will expose to a confluent herpes infection like that. So, okay. so if you have something that looks like disseminated herpes or varicella and is zinc negative, you should problem. consider erythema multiform. Less than 10% association with medication, 90% with infections, mostly virals. SCS is the reverse. It's almost 70% with drugs and reverse. Thanks. Thanks.